that night after this conversation with his with Joan and said, Joan wants me to sell the house. What do you recommend? I said, it's Carsdale. You're only half an hour from the city. You get some beautiful houses here. There's, you, you, I'm sure you'll find. I said, I, I have a friend of mine who's actually a friend of my wife's, who's a real estate agent, and I gave David the name of this person who was a real estate agent in Scarsdale. T to condense the story, David calls up the real estate agent, comes up the following Saturday, they look at a house, he buys the first house they see. They get, it's only right near the town of Scarsdale. It's on a, a cul-de-sac and it's the last house and, and behind it is a golf course or privacy. So he loved the fact that he could go out and they had to have a garden and there's no there's nothing there. So they bought the house. I think it was only like four hundred thousand or so in those days. Today the house is I'm sure worth a couple of million dollars. So he bought the house and he's ready to move out. He's he very easily sold this townhouse. You know, because for whatever, he never told me what he got for it, but I'm sure it was a great deal of money. And the house and scars there was, oh, the, well, the whole point of this, yes, yeah, come on, hello, yeah, I'll be there in a minute, I'm just finishing up. Sure. I'll be sure, there, sure. Like, give me five minutes. Okay, no problem. Okay. She says to David. You're not bringing those fucking pictures to in my house. I don't care what you do with them. She was very much against the cross dressing. Uh, she she wanted no David's. He he actually had kept some of his clothes in my house. Has had some suitcases and stuff in my house because he was only like a mile and a half away. So she those pictures are not coming. I, they give me bad vibes. They started drinking. David was a big drinker. And she also drank. So one night they both get it drunk and he says, okay, that's what you want. He takes all the albums and he takes them out and puts them on a trash can out in, in the real, right on the street where the trash collection is. And a couple of days later they move. Next morning, he looks out, they're gone. The albums are gone. Apparently, someone had taken them and took them to a flea market to sell, not necessarily the photographs, but the albums were beautiful. The albums are $30, $40 a piece. Two gay guys. Many years later. Many years, a couple, a couple of years later. Maybe two years, I don't know the time frame. Well, when did this happen that they moved? Back uh, 15 years ago. Okay. So. Two guys who, who I think were partners from Pennsylvania, had a small antique shop, periodically come to New York and go to this flea market in the village. And lo and behold are these beautiful albums and they looked inside of these strange looking women but they immediately say I think that's a man and they start doing some research on Casa Susana they find out uh, how I don't know how they did research but they found out somehow that there was a resort in Hunter New York so they they buy all these albums they buy every one of them I think they must have I'm gonna guess maybe two hundred dollars for the whole lot one of them of the men has a contact with a small book publishing company in here in New York and they put out this book called Casa Susana which goes on Amazon and becomes an interesting not a huge hit but people are buying it from all over the world Australia Germany South America Canada people who are interested in the trans thing are buying this copy of this book and which comes so popular they came out with a paperback for like four dollars or something. 
So now I go to visit my friend in Canada. I know nothing about this. I visit my friend up in Canada who s says, take a look at this. It's a paperback copy of Casa Susana. I said, oh my God. I took that picture. There was a picture of Susanna with a tree and it says, I said, I not only did I take that, but I developed the picture, the negative. And I'm looking and I said, oh my God. And ironically enough, I think there was only one photograph of me, which never made the book, but because I was the one taking all the pictures. And I would take their, some of their film and there's a favor process the other the other, the other solution what was a black and white Polaroid camera which took lousy pictures and they would fade so so anyway that pretty much summed it up now the end of, to get to the end of the story um, so where are we so far so David moves this car still and because I was a, a cross-dresser also Joan Bennett wasn't, she knew, I, I was there for a few times and had drinks and stuff, but she, she wasn't a big fan of mine because she knew I was also, and she thought maybe I was a bad influence to David. So one day I get a, a phone call about a, in the year 1996, 97. David calls me up and said, what are you doing Friday night? I said, nothing. I said, Joan would like to invite you to dinner. I said, what? I thought she didn't like me. No, she says, well, there's an ulterior motive. She has this young playwright who, who wants to raise money for a, an off-Broadway show. And he's, he's got it. And what he would like you to do is to videotape, if you would, a couple of the scenes, make a DVD, so he can raise money for the show. And he said, Don't only, you know, come down one night, we'll have dinner. And she'd like you to meet him. He'll be here Friday for dinner. I said, fine. So I told my wife, she said, go, you know, you never see him. So I got there about 6.30, we were having martinis. David's in the kitchen cooking. A nice young man, very elegant. He was probably about 30 years old, and he was a playwright and director. And he, I don't remember the name of the show, but it was a North Broadway play. And Joan was being very sweet, very nice. So about seven-ish, Joan, uh, the husband, David, says, All right, gang, go in the dining room. So we go in there. The, by the way, their house was very ornate. So we go into the dining room, and we're sitting there, and it's a table for 12, but everybody's got a corner, and I'm sitting there. And uh, David walks in with a tray with these little chickens, the squabs, it's stuffing. Joan Bennett looks up and says, oh, how wonderful. Closes her eyes and pulls over and drops dead at the table dies, has a heart attack, and falls into the, well, into the table. David freaks out and is, is yelling and goes over and, and uh, I dial 911. And an ambulance comes in there maybe three minutes later, but she was, she had passed, she died. Yeah, okay. Can I come in? Yeah, sure. Hello. How are you? Hi. 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 Are you ready for therapy? Yeah, I'm just finishing up. I, I had to do a deposition. Okay. For, for video thing. Okay, so what time are Another you? Another couple down? of minutes. In about three minutes. About okay. five minutes. All right. Thank you. I never let you alone here. You oh know. no, in any hospital. No, you, you know. So that's that's pretty much the story, and and. Uh, you know the rest of the story. Yeah, and, and let's, let's put it on the camera. So, mm -hmm. Harvey Firestein writes a play. And as I read an interview with Harvey. It was very yeah. interesting. He said when he grew up, yeah. his family went 
they to the cat the, skills, they, and he, he they, knew about they it. Knew he about said, the resort. He said he was much more interested in the in the nude resort than in the guys that dressed up, but he knew about it. Yeah. And you know, people kept wanting him to take a look at this book, and he got interested, and he wrote a, a Broadway play. And your daughter, and you take it from there. Well, uh, my daughter Jacqueline said, you know what? You got screwed with the photographs. You got no recognition. The Broadway play, it ain't going to happen again. So she got in contact with Harvey, with him. He would happen to be on, I don't know anything about Facebook, or apparently she's on Facebook and, and Harvey's on Facebook. So she would actually send him an email saying, my father took those pictures that you're basing your Broadway show on. And it's, he, he's already gotten screwed from the book because they were 15. But I'm not, I want some recognition now from the Broadway play. He in turn tells his publicist, who in turn tells the agency, and, they have a, and then a law firm calls me and starts asking me questions to verify that I was really there. And I, and I think I answered all the questions and I, made, I mentioned names and people and stuff that you wouldn't know unless you were there. Uh, Marie was from Italy, she had a, a wig store. Tito Valente was a, a radio announcer for a Spanish-speaking radio station in New York. That's how he made his living. And they bought this rundown children's camp that was, they probably paid like 300000 for it with little cabins. And they thought they could turn into a cross-dressing world, which they did for about a year or two. So when I mentioned names, I mentioned John Cummings from Australia, which I knew. Bob Feldman, who was one of the people that went there. The Felicity was an airline captain from Eastern Airlines when it was, and uh, he was six six three and the people who went there and, and there was a Canadian anyway they they verified that I was telling the truth that it, yes I took the photographs I, I went into details and some questions that they had asked me the bottom line is uh, Harvey invites Jacqueline and I to come down to one of the previews and I went down as quote as Jack I showed you the picture you have it? Yeah. He of, sent of, it to me. I'll put it, I'm going to put it on the screen at the and, and And for some reason, he, he, we had a wonderful time. And then he emails Jacqueline after it was nice meeting your father. And it was wonderful. And even in the play, there was a person like that always took pictures. It was really me. Yeah. Um, so he said... I would like to invite you to the official opening night. I would like to invite Andrea to come. I would love to see Andrea. And then, you, then you're invited to the after, after dinner party, the you know, after show party, which was across the street at the Copacabana. And I was on the, we were on the guest list. And, and this... we were sitting in the third row. Wow. And this was actually your big coming out publicly with your actual name, wasn't it? I didn't care. Because now if someone types your name, the that picture comes up. Jack Malik Broadway. Yeah. And I